What's up, what's up? Welcome back. This is the FUBU Radio here with the Kiss Radio Show Live. I'm your boy, Court DJ Hershey. That's here, Serrano, the voice. And your boy, Kanegis George. We're live and full effect, y'all. How y'all doing? How was your week? Good. 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 Y'all sound amazing today. Man, it's amazing. Wow. Fancy, dude. Gold member. Sexy and full. Zha Jing. Mm-hmm. Hey, Kissonians, how y'all doing? How was your week? Thank you for tuning in once again here on Fubu Radio and iHeart. We are having fun today. Hey, and guess what? Beer, 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 beer. <laughs> we got new music. <laughs> we got new music by legendary Jackie Clark, hey. Mary J. Blige. And T.A.P. T.A.P. Hey. Yes. And once again, we are the first to debut it. And you know what? We always talk about we feel good. So we're going to continue this. This is Feel Good. Jackie Clark, yeah, Mary J. Blige, and T.A.P. I'm your boy, Court DJ Hershey. That's here, Sir Ronald. I'm your boy, Canadian Joy. This is FUBU Radio, Kiss Radio Show, and iHeart. We'll be back with the topic of the day. But right now, let's feel good. Let's go. How y'all feel on that one? Yep. Feel good. Uh, <laughs> feel good. Feel <laughs> good. You know, I love, I love um, Mary J. Blige. Mm-hmm. Love the Clark Sisters. But I'm a huge TFP fan. Oh, she yeah. is something that is hot. A lot of people 
um, aren't as aware as we are of her talent level even before she was on that show. She is so amazing, and she does the opener for her show. Oh, I know. Yeah. Shout out! Shout out! You know out. who was missing from that song there? Who What's was that? Missing? Al Chante. Yeah, yes. you know what? That's the remix scene. That's I, the we called remix. it first. Uh huh. See, independent artist. Y'all been hanging around. Feel good with an Al Chante. I feel good. Hey man, that might be. That's a dope mix right there. I think you done I put something we, out there. We need to bring it up. Welcome back to the Kiss Radio Show on Fubu Radio and iHeart. Hey, topic of the day. You know, um, Valentine's Day is coming up. Yes, yeah. yes. And you know, there's a lot of uh, uh, different feelings from different people and different ways of life because of where they are right now. So, you know, there's some good, there's some bad, there's some love, there's some hate. So, question of the day, and I'm quite sure this will... Uh, light up our co-host over here, Vassir. <laughs> Why do single women say men are afraid of commitment? That's an interesting question or <laughs> an interesting way of presenting that question. Mm -hmm. Perhaps, and I mean, I probably shouldn't take this approach so that I could expound upon it a little more, but perhaps the reason why they say men are what? afraid of commitment is because those experiences that they've had with men that are afraid of commitment not all men are afraid of commitment but i don't think any single woman would just say that unless she had an experience the issue is women putting one man or a couple of men's behavior and using that as a blanket statement for all men that's not fair but perhaps the reason why some women would say that is because the <sighs> characteristics <laughs> some men have displayed with them hmm. or perhaps that man was just afraid of committing to you mm. there there are a number of reasons interesting concept cornelius what what what, what say you my friend um i say it might be that someone would want to commit too soon and too much you know, their level of commitment might be just like, wait a minute, we ain't, you know, we just met on Tinder. You already <laughs> <laughs> trying to find a wedding dress. Wow. Well, you'd be surprised. Sometimes it happens that way. Yeah. Just saying. Like, I, I don't think it's, it's got to, it has to be clarified what you mean by they're afraid of commitment. Well, of course, it's, you know, it's not a blanket statement. Yeah, yeah, I know. Every, like, every men don't want to commit. Well, I. The things that I've seen, I've seen a lot of women that say that is because they have been experiencing some personal challenges in their own relationship. And in more cases, <laughs> most cases, they're not realizing where this fear of commitment is stemming from. And it sometimes hurt. when. It My question is, what are you doing to cause him to be afraid to commit to you? Yeah. What are you doing? See, that's that, that's the question that I think is very interesting is when you put it that way, instead of are you doing something that doesn't want to make him commit to you by saying, what are you doing? You're automatic at automatically saying that the woman has an issue instead of asking her to reevaluate the issue and see if she's contributing to that decision. That doesn't mean it's her fault. But when you ask her, what are you doing? Well, I mean, but, it's like hey, saying, women, no, 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 he, but if women are saying they do the same thing. simple things like men are afraid to commit. So my question is, what are you doing to cause that man to not commit? So, I mean, you have to be look at yourself yeah. and go, well, this is what I'm looking for. This is conversation I've had with him, blase, blase, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So if you're if you going to make that blanket statement that men are afraid to commit. So my question is, what are you doing to well, cause well, that? And then the other well, let's play the averages. Sorry. So okay. l let's look at this. So you commit to somebody that you probably were maybe not absolutely sure that this was the one, okay? But because of peer pressure, let's say that, you do it anyway. Hormones. Whatever. <laughs> it fails. This marriage fails. Now, who is at loss? So if you think about it, most men, and I, I would say I put myself in, in, in uh, my shoes when I was single. These are one of the things that you have to consider. If you get divorced, men are at a loss, huge loss more than the woman. If you have kids, if you have property, if you have any type of uh, gain within the marriage, or if you had it prior to the marriage, you get either you lose it or you lose half of it in a divorce. Interesting. So I think most men are afraid of losing what they've built. Well, 
I would like to challenge that thought process. And, and I mean, truthful, truthfully speaking, it does happen on both sides. Men lose and women lose. Not as big to, as men. Regardless. And it's not even, it's not even a weight level on it because what you may experience in your divorce or breakup of a situation. I mean, if you j- these are just examples that I'm using because they are public examples. Mary J. Blige is paying <laughs> her former manager slash former husband, and he's the one who stepped out on her. So she's having to pay him spousal support. Um, that's a pretty good example of it being on the other side. Uh, I believe Halle Berry had to pay child support to a child that she did not bear during her divorce with uh, with um, Eric Benet mm-hmm. uh, because she did choose to adopt that child, understandably. But my point is simply that to use the say to say that men are in, are in fear of losing whatever it is they have. Everyone fears losing whatever it is that they have or have contributed. But those are two examples of females who are paying out the. For, for Two those. examples out of. I mean, I can't. Of, I can't. <laughs> Janet Jackson can't is made you. came up hugely. And oh, and and she deserved to come up with it. Oh, in the year. Just saying. I'm saying. I mean, you don't know what someone. But let's go back to the original question. We're talking about commitment. If your primary issue or reason for not wanting to be in a committed relationship, whether you're male or female, is because of what you may lose in divorce, you're already going in with a poor thought process toward relationships, period. Everyone loses whenever someone breaks up, whether you are married or not, because there's an investment of time, there's an investment of emotion and mental into a relationship. So if you step into a relationship with someone point blank who tells you in the beginning that they do not want a commitment, you're setting yourself up for failure. They've already told you. I don't know. Man tells you what Cornelius. he wants. Woman tells you what she wants. You got to believe them. If they don't want a commitment, they tell you that. They don't want a commitment. Don't try to change that. Things change over the course of time. Okay. So, I don't know. People have them. the right to change their mind. They do. However. Not in the middle of a. <laughs> however. Well, they have the right anytime. It, they do have the right to change their mind. Mm. However, I still believe that if, if your statement is, men are afraid of commitment then you have to look at yourself and go what is it that they are not committing to it what is am i putting too many expectations on what i think commitment is Mm -hmm. look at yourself look at yourself first and then you can go well this is this is what it is well you know what there was one time in life i had to say that i had to be absolutely blunt and say i'm not afraid of commitment I'm afraid to be committed to you. That's true. And it's all about the the truthness. And and for me, I'm I'm all around encompassing kind of being honest with the situation in itself. Me too. If I'm a crutch in this relationship, then I wouldn't be opposed to you saying, you know what, Hirsch, I can't commit to you. These are my concerns. So you have to look at, like Cornelia said, self. But when you do the averages, the yeah. averages. You're like 10 to 1 when it comes to men losing now versus women. So that's the reason why I brought out the, uh, yeah. the question of the day. If you uh, are constantly going to death row inmates.com <laughs> looking for commitment, <laughs> the issue might be with you. Ooh, that could yeah. be true. Six, I mean, seven, eight. Eight nine four zero. If you're going to death row inmates, I'm sorry, inmates. Inmates. You're the one with the fear of commitment. (laughs) No, you like you know. No, I think you're getting no words mixed up. Not committed. Commitment. No, what I'm saying is, if you are if you are constantly in relationships with people who are death row, you're just waiting for them to have the end of their sentence so you can start the next relationship. So technically, you are afraid of commitment because you know that commitment is going to end and you can pick up with someone if, else if your significant other has 25 years in prison are you still committed <laughs> we gotta hey we gotta come back and dial back on this topic of the day obviously it's a good one i think i think we picked a good one uh six seven eight eight nine four zero zero two six for our listeners to call in and join in this conversation in the meantime we got to figure out what's happening on in the world today oh yeah cornelius yes it's it's that time 
You spent all weekend ignoring social media, not listening to the news, paying, spending a lot of time on Backpage, Pornhub. <laughs> now it's time to get your week right with the front page. Vasia Serrano. <laughs> What's up, Kiss Radio fam? <laughs> We got a little effects on the voice here. Yeah. Happy Sunday. Let's get right into what is going on or some of what is going on. And of course, on many of these topics, you guys have heard some things about. Just find them interesting. Let's start with 45. Uh. I will not get too deep into this. I just find this puzzling for myself. So on on Friday, um, the news came that 45 ousted Lieut- Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Venman. Who was a uh, who is a decorated soldier and and was a national security aide? He actually played a central role in the Democrats' impeachment case. Of course, forty five did not get impeached, and now he, to me, it seems, is out for revenge and retaliation. And so, Vinman has been ousted in the midst of this retaliation. Um, it is reported by Vinman's lawyer that he was Vinman was escorted out of the White House complex on Friday and told to leave in retaliation for telling the truth. But Vinman was not the only person. Many people are talking about the two people, which the other person is Gordon Sondland, which I'll get to him in a moment. But the other person that left with Vinman was his twin brother, Lieutenant Colonel, I think it's Yevgeny Vinman. He's a National Security Council attorney who was also fired and suddenly with no explanation, even though he's given loyal service for 20 years, let go. And he walked out with his brother. So he didn't even testify. It was just like, (laughs) what movie is that with the white chalk outline of the dog? The dog was just, (laughs) there's a movie. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) There's a movie out there that has a white chalk outline of the dog. It's like the dog was just there. And in this particular case, he was just there. He just happens to be this guy's twin. Did not testify, but got let go because of the affiliation. So he got let go because he was associated. He, because his brother is, is the twin. So it's retaliation. <laughs> he just he just happened to be there, unfortunately. Um, Gordon Sonlin was the ambassador to the European Union. And he was... Actually, before he was let let go, he was advised that the president intended to recall him um, effective immediately as the United States ambassador to the European Union. So he decided um, that instead of being terminated, that he would rather design, um, resign. <laughs> he would rather resign. He would rather resign. I'm changing uh, my whole career. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so Trump is on the rampage. There are other people that he's mentioned um, since being... I'm not even sure what the word is anymore, but since he was not impeached. Acquitted. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody quit. Somebody quit in the middle of the process. <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, so he is out for revenge with a number of people and he's starting his retaliation now. So I thought, and I did actually do some research and it was inconclusive. And if anyone can tell me when it comes to the EEOC, isn't there language against retaliation? Everything that I read kept saying in regards to harassment or harassment, however people choose to um, pronounce it. But it, it sounds to me that when you are working somewhere, according to the EEOC, and you are asked, even in, this, in the sense of when you have to testify, that your employer is not supposed to be able to retaliate. So I'm a little yeah. confused. Yeah. But if someone has more clear language and can express or explain that to me, please, by all means, we are looking for you. Go ahead. I'm going to look it up right now. All right. Next one. Timing is everything. Let's talk about Gail King because I know this is going to go off the, the Richter. Here we go. So Gail King, and I'm still looking for the actual air date of this interview. I've not been able to find it. Her interview with um, Lisa Leslie. And this was after... The unfortunate incident where Kobe um, Bryant and his his daughter and several other people had lost their lives in that tragic helicopter crash um, about two weeks ago. Um, Gail is receiving quite a bit of backlash off of a snippet that CBS released 
where she questioned, uh, she was interviewing Lisa Leslie and she questioned the NBA player regarding Kobe's legacy. In the questioning, Gail said, it has been said that the legacy is complicated because of a sexual assault charge, which was dismissed in 2003-2004. And she asked Leslie if it was complicated, her words, is it complicated for you as a woman, as an WNBA player? Leslie's response was, it's not complicated for me at all. And she went into detail about how she knows Kobe and how she felt about the proceedings at that particular time. And again, I want to say, that the charges were dismissed. The sexual assault charge was dismissed. The alleged victim did not want to testify, but she did go on to file a civil suit. And one thing that Kobe did at that particular time was he admitted that he'd had adultery, but he said that he did not assault the young lady. But at this time, it's poor judgment to ask that question in an interview. Right. And Lisa Leslie also stated that um, the media has had many years to ask Bryant about the rape case and that the media should be more respectful at this time. And she didn't think it should be something um, that we should be hanging over his legacy. Again, timing is everything. But a lot of people are very, very upset about this snippet. Now, understand this entire because that was just a small part of the interview, but this entire interview happened and there was no backlash at the time of the interview. It is when CBS reposted that snippet that this issue came with Gail King. Even Lisa Leslie at the time of the interview felt, you know, things went over. They had the conversation and things kind of went past. But it wasn't until CBS reposted this. Now, Gail, according to CBS, conducted a thoughtful, wide-ranging interview with Lisa Leslie. But they have to had to go back into their own setup within their own organization to find out why something like this has happened. That snippet, that short snippet should have never happened. That way it should have never been released that way. It should never have been presented in this particular time. This is a, a time where Kobe cannot defend himself against this type of questioning, very much like people are comparing when Oprah also had the people come on from the Neverland story and, and put all these accusations out about Michael Jackson without Michael Jackson now again being present to, to defend himself. So in the community, there is outrage because of the timing, because of the lack of respect for Bryant's family at this particular time. It's not necessarily about the sexual assault case. It's about the degradation of his, his uh, legacy. And so a lot of people, LeBron James, um, Bill Cosby, but Snoop Dogg is the one that many, many, many people are talking about his yep. comeback because people feel, some people feel as though that he threatened Gail in his response. I'm not going to read verbatim what he said. Uh, Funky Doghead B um, is one <laughs> of the things that he called her. He said uh, he accused her of tarnishing Kobe, Kobe's reputation. And he also warned her to back off before we come get you. And some people are taking that as a threat. But Snoop Dogg has since responded saying, I was not threatening her. I'm a nonviolent person. When I did say what I said, I spoke for the people who felt like Gail was being very disrespectful towards, toward Kobe and his family. Would I look like wanting to harm a 70-year-old woman? I was raised better than that. I don't want any harm to come to her. I didn't threaten her. He was just saying that, listen, you right. went too far. <clears throat> get right. it right. So a lot of people are, are still going to be very upset. They are saying that, you know, Oprah and Gail have not been fair to African-American men, that they're always the one to tear them down when they are standing behind people or beside people like Harvey Weinstein, which they have not spoken up for, but there are pictures circulating with Gail and Harvey Weinstein, with Oprah and Harvey Weinstein. But many people take my take Many, take, many people take pictures with many, many people within an industry. A lot of people did not know behind closed doors what was going on with Harvey Weinstein. That does not mean that they support what he is doing. But people are pointing out that neither one of them have taken a public stance against Harvey Weinstein. Mm -hmm. But they tend to continue to do it against African-American men who have been accused of uh, different things. So, Yep, I was saying that a couple days ago. Yep. It's, it's a challenge, but I find another issue here. And that is simply 
right now with Gail standing in the media, you know, I don't know a whole lot about her career and I will willingly say that I know more about her relationship with Oprah as far as knowing her through Oprah and her appearances being by her side for all these years. So she has, is a prominent person now on CBS top rated show someone would release this particular clip it's like a minute and 34 seconds during this time to me sounds like sabotage uh not to me it sounds like the the problem that i have with the clip um it's not her asking the question about should kobe's leg should just be part of his legacy it's those two comments she made that came across that she was taking a shot like when Lee, when when lisa leslie made the comment about hey kobe when we out to the clubs or something, he's not one of the NBA players, my friend, that will ask him to go get a girl. Right. And she said, well, you wouldn't know that. She didn't have to say that coming. She was telling her about her relationship with Kobe at the bar to in the club scene. And she said, well, you wouldn't know that because you're just his friend. The next one, when she <clears throat> when she talking about him being acquitted, and then she came down, no, it was only dismissed because she didn't testify. Gail had to make them two comments. That okay. was her being catty. That was her being catty. And people are calling out her for her being catty. She shouldn't have said those comments. She should have just asked the question and moved on with the interview. But she put her personal opinion in there and being catty. And that's what people caught on to. Gotcha. And we and we didn't talk about, you know, the whole aspect of women sometimes doing that, being catty with each other. Uh, absolutely. She took a shot. Agreed. And, I mean, she is really wearing a butt whipping, if you will. She's going to tell you. Right <laughs> now you regarding those comments. Um, moving on. You know, tonight is two big shows one being the oscars which will air tonight the 92nd oscars will be aired at the dolby theater it'll be aired on abc tv and i have a connection there because i'm doing a giveaway on wednesday for a pre-valentine's day and you right. can get your you. lips looking like the people at the oscars because i've got a special gift that comes from the gifting suite but the other big thing tonight people are lining up for is that power finale that airs tonight at eight o'clock on stars that's the night 62 episodes it's going down but there's good news y'all ready courtney a kemp who is the showrunner and 50 cent who is the executive producer has now announced a total of four offshoot shows from the flagship they are calling it the Power Universe. Power Book Two will reflect on Ghost and will also show cast members Mary J. Blige and Method Man and many other very talented actors. And that show is going to focus on, on Ghost. They're saying that they, 50 Cent is saying that that show will start and will be aired on Sundays in place of where Power used to be, but that's going to start on a Sunday in June. Okay. Power Book 3, Raising Canaan, which is 50 Cent's character. It's going to focus, uh, it's going to be a pre-sequel story set in the 90s and explore the early years of Canaan. Nice. Power Book 4, Influence, follows Lorenz Tate's character, Rashad Tate, and his ruthless pursuit of power. And Power Book 5, Force, revol revolves around Joseph Sakura's Tommy Egan character as he cuts ties and puts New York in his rear view mirror for good. Nice. Power fans, you got something to look forward to, so look for something hot in June. All right, there All we right. go. Thank you. That's Vestia. your front page. That's your front page. Very knowledgeable. Very good. I'm just saying, hey, we're going to get into some good music, and we're going to come back. This is a FUBU radio, and this is the KISS radio show on iHeart. We're going to come back, first of all. We gonna hit this good music and we'll come back with the topic of the day. Let's go.
to the all new FUBU Radio, playing the hip hop and R&B hits of today and yesterday. Hey, trips that you plan for the next whole week. Been too long for so cheap and your flex so deep. So D, you got it, girl, you got it. Hey, you got it, girl, you got it. Yeah, pretty little thing, you got a bag and now you violent. You just took it off the line, no mileage. Way they hitting you, the DM looking violent. Talking while you come around and now they silent. Through the Cooper 17, no goddess. You be staying low, but you know what the fight is. Ain't never got you know it being modest. Pop it, but only cause you know you poppin', yeah You got it, girl, you got it Ay. You got it, girl, you got it Lil' baby and I'm back in a Birkin No nine to five, put the work in Laws and all, I love them all To me, you're perfect Baby girl, you got it, girl, you got it, girl You got it Tell them that it's over, ain't no debate it. All you need is me playing on your playlist. You ain't gotta be frustrated. I don't wanna play no games, play no games. Go around, get you my last name. I know you tired of the same damn thing. That's okay, cause baby, you, you got it, girl, you got it. You got it, girl, you got it.
Radio, playing the hip hop and R&B hits of today and yesterday. Welcome back to the best independent music worldwide. It's the Kiss Radio Show live. Your music, your way. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls from everywhere across the world, I present to you Cornelius George with Stupid, Stupid, and Stupid and the Dutch Hat. <laughs> man, she was on that mic. She boy. was on it, man. I love it. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. We're going to start off in Texas. Y'all ready for a Texas, man? Let's go, Texas. <laughs> Listen, if you're in Texas and you get stopped by the police, make sure... You give them the correct name. Uh-oh. Okay. And if you give them a fake name, make sure it doesn't have warrants attached to it. Are you serious? <laughs> Someone, no. There's a lady in Texas who was pulled over by the police. Uh, her actual name and ID has warrants attached to it. So she gave them a fake name. And when they went and ran the license, that name had warrants out on it too. <laughs> <laughs> so she in jail on double charges. Dumas. Her you, last name is definitely Dumas. Dumas. You like you have to be Dumas. better than that. And you know how we talk about exes and everything. Make sure you treat your exes right. There's a man who was ordered to pay his ex-wife a million dollars. So he got a million dollars in cash, put it in the yard, and set it on fire. What? <laughs> yes. I guess he figured he wasn't getting it no way. Yeah, so. set it on fire. Wow. The judge said he still had to pay her a million dollars though. What? Well, I mean, it must be nice to be able to pull two million dollars. Two million dollars. Like, you should have just gave her the million dollars. Like, I don't want you to have it. Bro, so if I'm you want to throw away fight. the money, give me a call at uh. <laughs> give us all the call. Give us all the call. You just throwing away money. That is just terrible, man. Why would you do that? You know what? Hey, Dumbass. the Dumbass. last last couple weeks we've been having stupid criminals. Just, One guy, you know, been put a pillowcase on his head. Well, Texas is not to be outdone. <laughs> this man pulled his shirt up over his head, put on some long white socks, and tried to rob a convenience store. Where was he wearing the white socks? On his arms. <laughs> you know how, if you're from the South and, you know, we don't get a lot of snow and your parents didn't buy your glove, you put on socks to go outside <laughs> and play in the snow. <laughs> you know, so he put on long white socks to cover his arm and put his shirt up over his head. Mm. And tried to go rob a bank. I mean, a convenience store that way. That was convenient. Yes, you got to be one of the dumbest people in the world. You got robbed by a sock puppet. And if you, by chance, (laughs) are going to trial, double check your attorney. (laughs) Please. (laughs) Here we go. The next man, this Eureka man. Eureka? Eureka. Uh-huh. He discovered something. Yes, he <laughs> discovered that his trial will be or did he? postponed indefinitely because his attorney was just arrested on drugs and weapon charges. What? <laughs> How you and your attorney charged with the same thing? <laughs> he charged with drug trafficking, and his attorney get charged with drug and weapon charges. Big. Ra- hey, it takes a talent to do that. Yeah, man. It takes a community to raise a criminal. Wow, Lee, I like, that is by far the dumbest thing ever. Oh, man. And not to be outdone, my girl, she makes the dunce hat. Your girl. I love her. Uh-oh. Erica Badu. Oh, what did she no. do? Erica Badu makes the dunce hat. She don't? Well, we talked about Gwyneth Paltrow has a candle. Oh, yeah, sweet. Yes. I, somebody had to do something. Erica Badu... When a stepfather, she has incense that smell like her lady parts, and it's called Baidu. <laughs> Not gonna say the word, or it could be called Bad You. All depends on how you break the word down. Cornelius. Not done. She says, when they asked her, how did you come up with the scent? She said, I took a bunch of my Mm. panties and cut them up and lit them on fire. And 
that's how we got the aroma of my scent. <laughs> allowed to take a deep breath right now. <laughs> Your room, house, car smelling like Badu. Far. That's going to BP. Ba- ba- stink. That's Erica Badu BP in. Mm. It's going too far. I don't know. I mean, what? Somebody's just gonna take a step further. We knew that was gonna happen. Just didn't know who. <laughs> Isn't there already a BP out there? They sell gas. Yeah, somebody's gonna. We have candles. We have incense. Somebody's gonna get some of that little African oil stuff in there and be actual fluid. Black dude, come here. You're gonna be able to put in your aromatherapy. Rub that on your neck right there. <laughs> <laughs> who wants to walk around smelling like? Badunk. Mm. Just wait. There's gonna be a man to come out. Mm. It's coming. A man scent is coming out. It's coming. Strange. It's coming. That's going to be the name of it. It's going to be called scent. It's, it's Coming. It's Coming is the name of the... <laughs> Get your free bottle of It's Coming. Ildris Elba edition, right? At a gas station near you. Denzel Washington. <laughs> Bruce Bruce. Strange. Oh. This is the scent. That's it. Okay. The last one we're going to do. A teacher, a not teacher, but a principal from the state of Washington is on suspension right now because she took to her personal social media page and said, Karma finally caught up with Kobe. Wow. What? Yeah, she is on suspension right now. For, she's Come on her on personal man. page. She said that. She don't make the dunce hat for the comment for doing that. She makes the dunce hat. She said, the same way people feel about me making the comment, I have the right to feel about the person I made the comment about. Then she had to come back and retract that and give an apology for the community. Yeah. Retraction was very much Freedom of speech is not free. (laughs) You have to be careful what you say, no matter, like we said about uh, Gail and Snoop. Both of them have had, they both had to make, come back and make other statements. You can say your opinion. Just say it away from social media. Tell it to somebody <laughs> personally. Tell exactly. it to somebody you trust. Just ridiculous. Tell it to your, your deaf mute cousin. <laughs> well, it can't be repeated. Wow. <laughs> Don't put it on social media. I mean, lady, because there's a lot of people out there that feel either like Kobe or didn't like Kobe. Right. And then that's their right. Just keep it off of social media because freedom of speech is not free. I agree. Well, Cornelius, thank, yes. thank you once again for finding all the stupidity in the world. Everybody, give a big round of applause for Cornelius George and the Dunce Hot. I'm buying Eric about Duke's incense. Uh, Burn it on your own time and don't wear your clothes in here afterwards. Man. Burning it right here at the station. We don't. <laughs> we don't. Hey, oh, nice that's going to bring us back to the topic of the day. Why do single women say men are afraid of commitment? 678-894-0026. If you want to call in, join in, and chime in this wonderful conversation piece. Kissonians are live. Doing some shout-outs. What's going on, Simeon? I see you. Shatown is in the building. Justin's online. So, Ryan, I see you. We got Marty P. You know how you go. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Uh, again. So, afraid of commitment. What are they committing to? That's the main thing. That's the question you got to ask. What are What am I committing to? What are What are they committing to? What are you asking them to commit to? That's just like you asking me to pay six hundred dollars a month for a Yugo. For those that don't know what a Yugo is, it's you know. What? I'm dating myself. You're committing. You have to go in there. And you have to make these payments every month for something that you know good and well is not worth jack. Badu. Mm. So you're saying that commitment is not worth anything? What are you? I don't, I'm confused. I'm sorry. What are you saying? The type of it's car you get. To. What are you committing to? You come into a Yugo. It's like going to that's my a Chevrolet dealership and going to the buy here pay here lot. Okay, I think it's a really good idea to make this a blanket statement to follow for for both because right now it sounds like the both of you are saying in your answers it sounds like both of you are making it seem as though that women um if if a man is willing to make a commitment to a woman he needs to know what he is getting into but that also goes for women 
and I agree with that. Women need to know what they're getting into as well. But the examples in which you guys are using are really poor. A for you who? go for, for who? who? For you. Come out of your poor. mouth. A yo, a you, a you go. That's like a bad comparison to make. It's not am, a bad if I'm comparison. investing in you, am I investing in a good car or a bad car? Oh, so am I, I should just say uh, old uh, Rolls Royce. I should say I'm not. Don't use a car at all. We're this, talking about people. Can we talk about people? This is an analogy. It's okay, nothing so personal. What I'm saying is, as a woman, that's the problem. That's not that's a very good analogy to use regarding relationships. So, so, the, so now this is the other thing. The type of car is they make problem. it relatable. Well, it is relatable. If okay. we're talking about men afraid of commitment, men will respond to. Hey, if I'm going to pay all this money to something that's not worth anything, they get that. Cornelius got it. We're not comparing a woman to an automobile. That's not what we're doing. What we're talking about is value. So if this is something and commitment could be anything, my time, my space, my energy putting into this. The analogy was the time space that man does payment versus what am I paying for you go. So can we use the analogy Verizon, AT and T, T Mobile? Why can't no you contract? just talk about people in general instead of having it to to link it to an object? No, it's just an well, analogy. It's just an analogy. It's an analogy. You know, I mean, that's what you do it's, with analogy. And it's generalizing because sometimes when you put it in a form of people, some people take it very personal. Yeah, I think yeah. I'd rather be compared to people than a, a old beat up car. And a money <laughs> Oh, so it was an old beat up car. Maybe we should have had a new car. It, it could be a new period. Yugo. You, but so you know, a new Yugo. to answer your question again, when it comes to why <laughs> some women feel as though men are not, uh, men do not want to commit. Going back to what we said early on, you know, sometimes we ladies have to look at ourselves and see what it is about us that one, if we're looking for a commitment from a specific man, what is it about that man that wants you want a commit for, commitment from him? Are your standards too high? Because sometimes it can be, and when I say too high, too high for that person. Um, maybe your standards with another gentleman may be able to meet, be met because of that person, whereas it might be too high for another gentleman. Not saying that there's anything against their character. Or it's a character flaw. They just might not be able to meet your expectations. You can't ask people to give something, one, they've never experienced, um, and two, they don't have. Uh, so when you're saying that you're looking for a commitment from a man and he's not willing to give it to you, can he meet you at what your expectation level is? Um, I think Hershey made the point earlier. If he can't meet you there, then that might not, that might be a reason why he doesn't want to commit. Um, are all of the men that you are meeting, all of them don't want to make a commitment. It could be something with you that not these could men be. are seeing not could be. that you may need to reevaluate yourself. Well, that's what um, we're saying. So it's right. it's about looking at self. But specifically, because of the question, it's women stating that men are commitment. They're commitment phobes. So it's like looking into what is it. So I'm just saying generalizing. I know a lot of good men that are not afraid of commitment. It's just the commitment to who they're committing to. Exactly. And why is it that they're not committing? This is to another it? bad analogy. Well, I'm using people. <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying, but he say he's mine is going to be another bad analogy. Well, at least you, you put it out there. All right, here's the, another bad analogy. Uh, some people like to commit to purchasing a car. Some people like Uber. Correct. Same type of philosophy. Different analogy. So, so make it a person. So uh, a woman would be what car and what woman would be an Uber. Help me out. We're not comparing the not car to the no. person. We're just generalizing. Commitment so, means it's the commitment. Commitment well, is to the purchasing the car. You, It's yours. You're financing it. You're doing, taking care of it. Uber, you're just taking the ride. So let's let's put it this Level way. Level relation people want. Let's put it this way. Just in, here for the ride. In aspect of a you go to a person. The woman or man does not cook, clean, uh, support the house financially, emotionally, personally, or spiritually. So the, the only thing that they're good for at this point may be a good rump. Maybe. 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 You might The clutches might work on this one particular time when y'all met, but then as y'all spend time with each other, you know, the transmission went out. So do we get the analogy? Sure. So let me flip it. <laughs> Gotta flip it. No, we don't. 
Sure. Here so we go. Yeah. here is my question. <laughs> what would make you want to commit to a woman? What are the things, I have two gentlemen here in front of me, what are some of the things that would make a man want to commit to a woman? Because that might be something that women need to assess as well. And we gotta be that quick because we only got five minutes, so. Well, let's do this after five minutes. We can't do that after five <laughs> minutes. That's <laughs> the whole point. Six seven eight eight nine four zero zero two six. 6 This is the KISS Radio Show on FUBU and iHeartRadio. Sounds uh, like a good conversation for Wednesday. Well, Wednesday is not our show. Oh, not our show. That's right. Very special for show on Wednesday for lovers only. Which I was trying to get some of this in, oh, yeah. but it flipped. Okay, yeah, we ain't got to be at lovers only. <laughs> oh, I guess Ooh. you guys Shalimar, got to join me. This is me. for the lover in you. You guys Ooh. got to join me on Wednesday night. I'm taking over our regular show. It's a pre Valentine's Day show, it's for lovers only. We're going to get you with some Lutha. <laughs> Maybe some Lisa Fisher. With a loofah. <laughs> maybe yeah, with a maybe loofah. that too when we're done. All right, get some loofahs. <laughs> and I do have this awesome giveaway. I have two giveaways, in fact. Somebody's going to win a $50 gift certificate or gift card. And someone's going to take home a bit of the Oscars. Because in this awesome little bag I have here, this awesome little package, is some Oscar-worthy treats that some of the stars at the Oscars got in their gifting suite. So Okay, well, hey, Cornelius, yes. give me some exciting uh, close of comments and your uh, social media tags. Be safe, be productive, and be nice. That's it. Be safe, be productive this week, and be nice. Okay. And that's your Serrano. And all things that you're choosing, choose wisely. Choose your mate wisely. Choose who you commit to wisely. Choose who you spend your time with wisely. Invest wisely. That's time, mind, body, and spirit. All right. Me, myself, uh, be kind. Be financially responsible. And be aware of your domino effect. That's going to be my new slogan for uh, 2020. Be aware of your domino effect. You got to realize sometimes your actions or your decision may affect those behind you. Mm. Hence the domino. So uh, I am Core DJ Hershey. I'm Vassar Serrano, The Voice. And I'm your boy, Kenise George. You can find me on I am Core DJ Hershey. Vassar, V-A-S-S-I-E-R underscore S-E-R-R-A-N-O. And Cornelius Joy, J. Cornelius G1 on Instagram. Okay. So we're going to get back into some good music. Um, this is our time on FUBU Radio and iHeart. Uh, we're going to play some more good music. I think it's going to be Valentine's Day related music. Ooh. So, uh, and we're going to continue on Facebook Live to continue this conversation. In the meantime, all right. Let's find that pony to get I'll on. See y'all Wednesday. Sexy Wednesday. Kiss Radio.
Welcome to the Kiss Radio Show Live. This is the Kiss Radio Show. And DJ Hershey, who am I speaking with? Yo, what's up, DJ Hershey? How you doing, man? Who is this? This friend right here in Riverdale, Georgia, man. Hey, you know what? What's going on? You calling in about the topic of the day? Oh, I don't know the topic of the day, man. I'm just calling to holler at you, man. That's all. All right. Well, we appreciate you calling in. Yes, sir. I've been looking at your mixes, man. I enjoy it, man. Yep. All right. We appreciate you, sir. Have a good one. Yes, sir. Thank you. Have a good one. Yo, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Back to the show. Hey, so uh, we're going to close out just to kind of finish out the uh, the comments that uh, we were talking about here on the topic of the day, why women feel, well, why single women feel that men are afraid of commitment. And uh, yeah, we got we got a, a very personal little bit. <laughs> but uh, Vasir, she posed a really good question. What was that question, Vasir? I don't think it was a question. It was more more of a statement in the sense of you know, and we we bring up what women feel or how they feel when it regarding these types of conversations surrounding relationships how about you provide women what it is that some men are looking for in order to find themselves in a committed situation instead of saying why do women say men are afraid to commit how about let's give them reasons why a man would commit well see now that's actually flipping the actual question that is i'm asking for resolution well but the resolution has to come from the the women part of view of what things do they feel men are not committed because they are making the statement that men are afraid of commitment. So why so, are you making the statement? We need that yeah, intel so need that. in order to give you an answer. Yeah, can't give you the answer to that one. I'm pretty sure I said early on some of the reasons why women are, are feeling that way is because uh, one of the reasons could be because of the experiences they're having with different men. Perhaps the men are not... Um, Again, some people come straight in saying, I'm not looking for a commitment. I'm just looking to have a good time. I'm not at that place in my life. And some women take that. They hear that. They get involved with the person. They think they want, they're going to change them. What, what level of commitment focus. are they talking about? Can you know, if you if you look at these fundraiser sheets, you I, have a million not, dollar. I'm not doing that with I mean, but, but it's real, though. It's, it's real. real. I mean, a commitment. I mean, a commitment. No, I don't what type of commitment you have? What, what does it mean? What fits in that box for you for commitment? Because... Yeah. Everybody's box for commitment might be different. That's that what I say very about thousand dollar level, ten thousand dollar level, it depends. five dollar level. I mean, level. just as it's just it varies what are you just to as it to? is for a man. I mean, depends on what how that woman is made up, what her needs are. It's going to vary, like you said, by person, what level of commitment they're looking for. Some people won't just want somebody who's going to come around and help them with things, a maintenance man, if you will, because they feel as though they got everything else. Mm-hmm. I mean, but then maybe they can't find a maintenance man, which I don't know how, why that would be hard. But um, <laughs> and in case people don't know what a maintenance man is, that's the man that comes in and cleans out your per- personal pipes. And I ain't talking about, you know, your house plumbing. I'm talking about your personal plumbing. That's your your maintenance man. Some oh, women, your pipes need to be cleaned some out? Some women may need <laughs> or may want a partner, a true partner, a true life partner, and they're looking toward working with that with one person. They see qualities in that one person they would like to partner with and make something greater of that. And they're looking for a man to commit the same idea with them. They might want someone to look at them as a life partner as well. I mean, there are so many different levels, to your point, based on what a person's needs are. But if you find a woman that is meeting many people or dating or seeing different people and she just can't seem to find that commitment, sometimes they're not educated. And when I say they're not, we're, we're not educated. We don't know specifically what the quality man that we're looking for, we think is a quality man what that man desires of us we can work on ourselves and think that we have all of the answers i got my finances together i keep myself looking good i work out but maybe there's a man out there that may not look at those particular qualities maybe he's looking past that to something else and that woman does not possess that and so therefore he's not committing so that's what we're asking so for each every every individual woman has their ideal man right i would think so well i mean you got a personal preference like yeah cornelius so. uh, i'm not gonna keep using this analogy with trucks but 
everybody likes something different. He might mm-hmm. like a full body truck. Me personally, I like coupes. It's what we like for our individual selves and what we want in our lifestyle. Women are no different. There's a particular woman, person that you would like to be around all the time. So in that, and we'll flip it, women too. I would think that women want a particular man to possess certain characteristics. Quality. Quality that they view as quality to enhance their home. So if they're used to a man providing everything and they're just taking care of the home, that's what they do. If they're looking to uh, do everything financially, 50-50 down the middle. If they're looking for a man to do that, that's what they do. Well, that's what I'm trying to um, bring out. What is it that causes single women? And I'm saying when you do a ratio, especially here in Atlanta, which is where they say, you know, in Atlanta, it's very hard dating. The ratio is 10 to 1. So what is it that's telling these women that men are afraid of commitment? What what are they seeing or what are they experiencing Makes them do that. I mean, the answer to that question is they're experience, experiencing men that won't commit to them. I mean, that's the simplest answer. I can't give you a breakdown by every situation because don't know every situation. I can speak from when I was single. Uh, some of the challenges I faced dating here that I did not face in other places um, was the... And I can't say every man thinks this way, but the idea that uh, there, I had someone tell me, plain and simple there are 20 this is atlanta there are 20 other women that will do what you won't do so i need to quit sitting up on that thing is what i was told Mm -hmm. and i politely declined and told him that you can have the 20 but i'm the one i'm not i'm not doing what you're asking me to do Mm -hmm. and i'm fine with that i don't i wouldn't want a commitment from someone like that i don't want to have to bend over backwards and compete with what other women are doing in order to have someone that chooses me for my qualities, um, for what I bring to the table. I'm not doing that competition thing. Never had to, never will. And I totally get that. Mm -hmm. So now you're saying you have certain expectations in your relationship, correct? Absolutely. Okay. So when you have that statement within you, which you've explained very well, But then you go to, let's say, the other 89% of the women that's out there and they generalize it saying men, plural, are afraid of commitment. It's kind of like you could generalize, but when it comes to women, it's individual. Okay. Again, there are many (laughs) people out there that will generalize. I'm not one of them. That's why I I use some, the word some. And I will also use many, but you don't hear me use most Most. often because that would say to me that a majority of people feel a particular way. So I don't think that all women think that no man wants a commitment, that most men don't want a commitment. I think the women that are making those statements that most men, they're talking about most of the ones they have experienced. In their circle. I get that. Correct. And so it's not a general blanket statement. Um, Everyone does not think it's just like I don't think like maybe the next woman thinks or I would think that Cornelius doesn't think like the next man think we all have our independent thought process based off of what we've experienced. So I don't think that there is a majority of most men that don't want to commit. Yeah. I think there are men who have decided that they don't want to commit or will not commit until they find the woman of their choosing. And in the meantime, they're going to have fun while they can or their expression of fun because you can still have fun in your marriage you can still have fun in a committed relationship but if you want to choose to be king akim and so <laughs> so your wild oats then a man is going to do that until he's ready to settle and baby girl you just might be may not be the one he wants to settle down with so don't waste your time well you know uh king akim he actually didn't sow his wild oats his father he said Father told him to go That's what he was doing, but he did not do it because he was looking for the one. Correct. So just had to clear that up. Cornelius, you was about to say something? Uh, I would agree with everything y'all were saying. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's the show, y'all. Yeah. 
We want to thank everybody for tuning in. This is the Kiss Radio Show live on FUBU Radio and iHeart. And all of our Kissonians that always show up, we love y'all for real. Hey, y'all. this weekend, y'all be careful. Um, no acrobats that you can't stretch. <laughs> Stretch. I didn't know how else to say Listen, it. Go Be careful. Stretch. Know your strengths and Hot limits. Hot yoga. Do some stretch first. <laughs> and my thing would always be: don't wait until Valentine's Day to show the person that you love you love them. That's right. Yeah. Really? Just saying. Some people don't know how to do that. That should be an every day. I mean, you don't have to go overboard every day, but this should be some form of affection and love toward your partner every day, even if it's just a simple. I don't have a whole lot of time. Babe, I'm thinking about you. Hey, when she walks by you in the kitchen, put a tap on the pot. Depends on who she is. Love that. Damn. They like it. Be extra sometimes. Everybody wants to be wanted. Hey, in the meantime, y'all make sure y'all uh, tune in this Wednesday. Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday for the uh, Vassism mm-hmm. show. For lovers only. We're not invited. We're going to take it back. We're going to take it back. We're not invited, Cornelius. I keep saying I'm going to do some Luther. She keeps saying Luther. Might do some Keith Washington, Alexander O'Neill. We're going to take it back. Okay. This is not your average everyday music. It All is right. for the lovers. It's going to put you in the mood. So get your cognac. Get your lingerie. Get your hot candle wax. Whatever you're into. And just Sound like Cornelius. Get ready. <laughs> get your Erica Badu incense. Get ready incense. for Friday. Don't get the <laughs> Don't get, get the your Erica Badu. Don't get the coochie sense. Don't get the coochie sense. You better get them. Don't do that. When, uh, no. And for me, mm. happy birthday weekend. That's right. Happy birthday. That's right. I got a sweetheart. Yep. Literally. The world celebrates Valentine's Day. I celebrate my sweetheart on his born day. Oh. See how That's she be so pimping sweet. me? Oh, I will pimp you. Uh. Wait till later. All right. That's my cue. <laughs> that is my cue. Y'all have a wonderful weekend, and uh, we'll see y'all Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. Peace out. Peace out. Ah. T.P. Look, they get it, how they live it. Yeah, they live it, how they get it. Boo boo radio, keep it spinning. Now, if you like it, you should listen. But don't write what they inventing unless you've been a call for what percentage. Now, you tripping off that vision. Treat this music like religion. I told you we don't stop. DJ Hershey, let it bang at the side. Want a music revolution? Yeah, you've come to the right spot. Oh, you want to bubble with the beat? This Boo boo radio, but let a family. Truth hurts, Vessia to Cornelius. Gonna call them up. Y'all been knowing this for a while. Quit playing like you don't know, turn the volume up real loud.